introduce David Nussbaum, who's the founder CEO of Portal Hologram Company. Um, I am so lucky to be on his team. And I believe the work that David is doing is the future. His inventions, he's going to discuss, wait till you hear about this. It's really the core philosophy of behind why we started AI Showbiz Summit 4.0. And um, I'm, I'm so excited. And I want to remind everyone that David is doing a double header today. He is also going to be entertaining us tonight about how we can have fun with holograms. David, you're still on mute. So go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, take it away, David. Uh, hey, thanks, Molly. I'm, I'm actually coming to you from the warehouse uh, where 41 sets is uh, is letting portal graciously kind of live inside of their warehouse it's uh you're gonna hear some echo is that okay a little bit of a little bit of background echo molly it's Does fantastic okay? it adds to the acoustics right. it's perfect okay good uh so yeah i'm sitting here i'm in a warehouse this is where we manufacture all of the portal machines it's actually coming in real bright right now for some reason. I, you're not getting a good look at it, but I actually have our um, our prototype, our sellable unit uh, directly behind me. Um, Portal is sort of the invention that was dreamed up when all of the giant hologram stage shows all started competing with each other for business. Uh, before Portal, I used to run a company called Hologram USA. We were the, uh, the largest hologram entertainment company in North America. Uh, we use the exact same patents that were famously used when Tupac Shakur was, uh, was digitally resurrected from the stage at the Coachella Music Festival in 2012. And from there, we just started bringing all of these late legends, all of these late icons back from the dead so they could posthumously perform in massive state shows uh, here in this country and around the world. Uh, it's been used not only by artists and musicians and entertainers, but it's also been used for politicians and speakers, um, religious leaders, inspirational uh, speakers. And um, uh, one of the things that I did, one of the first things that I did in the hologram industry was because uh, I, I knew, look, the Tupac thing was so big and it was going everywhere. Uh, everybody had been talking about it. You couldn't, you couldn't bring somebody back to life and it'd be bigger than what Tupac did at Coachella. So I knew the, the way I was going to make a mark on the hologram industry. Um, by the way, I'm using the word hologram very loosely. Uh, we are not producing holograms. These are uh, not real holograms, but we use hologram uh, as a replacement word for the effect of putting something in a place where it can't be for one reason or another. With Tupac, with the hologram, he couldn't be there because he was dead. Uh, but the technology made it look like he was there. Um, in other cases, like the one I'm about to tell you, when I beamed Julian Assange out of the Ecuadorian embassy, love him or hate him, it's a train passing by right now. So when I beamed uh, Assange out of the Ecuadorian embassy to a speaking job that he took in the United States at the Nantucket Project, which is a lot like your convention, but on the island of Nantucket, uh, he couldn't be there for one obvious reason. He was under political asylum inside the Ecuadorian embassy in London. So we beamed him there via um, hologram telepresence or holoportation from one place to another in real time. And that gave us global awareness. Everybody knew who we were. The next day, uh, Jimmy Fallon was talking about us on The Tonight Show. Um, we were getting interviews from Fox News to ESPN. I mean, it was, we, you know, everybody was interested. So a, um, a technology um, production format business was created. This was in late 2013, early 2014. And all of a sudden we started beaming. I beamed Jimmy Kimmel, the other Jimmy talk show host. I started beaming him to the Country Music Awards year after year so he could physically perform in two cities at the same time. And then as award winners were coming back, they were being interviewed in Hollywood while it being in Nashville, they were being interviewed or they were, um, or they were performing the song that they just won the award for in real time. 
So I started sending lots of people, lots of places, huge team of people that I used to work with at Hologram USA, great producers, great technicians, just great brains. Um, none of this would have been possible without them because I learned everything from doing all that stuff. Um, so then the stages started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, you know, we did a fashion show where we filmed a bunch of Christian Dior runway models at Fashion Week in Paris. And then we took that content, blew them up to 25 feet tall. We stretched that hologram stage like 300 feet. I mean, it was enormous. It's China. And then we beamed all that content to China where we built this stage. It's China's largest hologram ever. So we just started going bigger and bigger and bigger. And then other hologram companies started coming on to the scene. Um, uh, uh, Ronnie James Dio and Frank Zappa st started touring as late icons through a company called Illusion. And then um, Roy Orbison, Maria Callas, uh, Buddy Holly, and, and most recently Whitney Houston started touring uh, uh, as you know, posthumously performing in front of cities all over and cr crowds all over the world, a company called Base Hologram. So now there was a lot of competition. Who's going to kind of do the biggest stage possible? So I went the other direction because I don't like competition. I want a thing all for myself. Uh, so I created Portal. And so Portal basically shrinks everything down into what you see here, which is basically the size of, I'd like to try to get you a better angle. I mean, I don't, when I tested this out, I was getting a better. So what I can do is, is there a way to, ah, it doesn't matter. So I could shrink it down to basically the size of a telephone booth and it's uh, seven feet tall, four and a half feet wide, two and a half feet deep. It's basically just big enough for a single passenger. So anybody could be digitally resurrected. Anybody could beam in. Uh, anybody could be pre-recorded and then played back uh, in the corner of an office or in a uh, airport terminal or in a movie theater lobby. Um, so you could basically um, beam anybody from anywhere to anywhere in real time uh, right up here. There, there. There's a camera that faces the audience so that when somebody beams into it, the person being beamed in can see, hear, and interact with the audience that they're being beamed in front of in real time. And then the, the, the things on the sides here, these are speakers so that the audience could hear. Everything is completely self-contained, right? So when, um, when somebody beams in, we want to make it so that they look like they're in there. Here's, here's, a, here's me. Maybe Molly will recognize hologram, hologram David from the gig that we did at... Uh, at Pepperdine University. Um, this is not the, uh, so the shadow is real. The reflection on the ground is real. Here. It's really my size, right? So, so it's life size. It's the size of a person. So when somebody needs to be somewhere for one reason or another, you can now beam them there in real time. Uh, we're getting a lot of calls right now because of coronavirus, because of travel restrictions. It's like, hmm, when you can't be there, you can beam there. So we can now send anybody anywhere in, from anywhere in the world uh, into a, a hologram projection portal. And what's really exciting about that is that uh, this works across all platforms. You could use this for politics, let's say, I don't know, Joe Biden, he's running for president. Uh, coronavirus is still out there. If older people get it, they get really sick. Hmm, he needs to campaign. What's he gonna do? Well, maybe we could beam Joe Biden or anybody. I'm just using Biden as our place person here. You know, uh, Biden can now beam from the safety and security of his own basement. Uh, or campaign headquarters into all 50 states at the exact same time. And uh, with portal technology, when Biden beams in, he can actually choose who he's gonna interact with. So he can start taking questions from the audience and um, 
and he could say, he could look at his monitor of all of the, I don't know if you can hear that, but some cops flying by this uh, warehouse. How am I doing, Molly? Am I doing okay? I'm just... Uh, David, you are hitting it out of the back, <laughs> back um, the ballpark. And I love that you're showing the uh, Pepperdine hologram. And that was such a fun day. Uh, uh, you're doing great, David. Oh, thank you so much. All right. Uh, let me show you some other stuff. So this is, so what's great is I have an app here. It's hard to tell. Let's see here. Wow. Yeah, this is really not... Is it like that for you as well, Molly? You're just getting just a big white screen. Yes. I don't know why the light is normally not like that. Uh, mm. It's something, it must be the overhead fluorescence. It's very bright in here. I'm, I could lower the light. Wait. Okay. Thank oh, you. there. I know what it is, David. Uh, when you, no, okay, don't come so close. It's when you come close that it gets bright. Now it's dark. It's right. great. You know it's what? I turned... I turned the background light off a little bit. Oh, dang it. Here it comes. No, no, David, listen to me. Just okay. go backwards. It's when you go backwards that goes darker. There, there. Hi, right, can you hear me? There you go. Okay. Well, this is ridiculous. I'm so far away and it's still doing it. Wait. Okay. Hang on. So this is me. Okay. Um, About, uh, let me show you this, right? So you could change the background color to any color. It doesn't have to be white. So if you're, if you're a sports team, if you are a wedding and you have a color scheme that you have to hit, you can, you can use a portal because we can match the color exactly. So like with the Tupac technology, with that, with that Tupac hologram technology, you had to have a black background. You have to have darkness. You have to have controlled light. With portal, you could literally do it in daylight. It's, I'm in a very well lit room here. Um, you can have daylight. I've got dimmers on it. So if you're in a dark space, you turn the dimmers down. If you're in a super bright, maybe you're in an outdoor mall, turn those lumens all the way up. We're patented um, a number of different ways. It's very exciting, uh, this new technology. People really seem to like it. This is a guy named Spencer. Um, you could use, uh, this is something that we did at another convention called Comic-Con. We're gonna just cover her up right there. She's very, okay, there it is. All right, I don't know if kids are watching, uh, but look at the shadows, look at the reflection. I mean, they look like they're inside the machine. And this is what it looks like in real life. This is what it looks like in person, just big enough for a single person. Game of Thrones, right? So one of the things that we're doing is we are developing uh, a new category of hologram projection machines. Uh, they are uh, going, we're gonna go larger, right? And we, we are also gonna go smaller. So this is the portal, the hollow portal, full size unit, but we're also looking at doing two different um, other sizes smaller. We're doing a half size. Uh, so maybe if you are a DJ or if you are, if you're somebody that works behind a counter, you don't need the whole body. You don't need the full size body. You just need from the chest up. So that would be perfect. So that is like a, like a 42 inch, 43 inch model. And then we're gonna go even smaller, tabletop, a portal uh, mini unit. Um, we're trying out different names as well, but I think the portal mini would be great because uh, it would be basically the size of uh, that would sit on top of a desktop or a tabletop, just like an old school computer might have done. And it's got the dimension. It's deep so that when somebody beams into it, it'll look like a little mini guy or great for advertising, great for um, uh, teaching. I think it would be a great teaching tool to sit on desktops of people. Then an educator can just beam into classrooms um, around the world, uh, and that, I haven't even talked about the, the software that we're putting into it. 
um, virtual technology, artificial uh, technology, software management. Um, uh, we're going to make it nice and easy for people to beam from wherever they are to anywhere they need to be without all kinds of clunky production equipment. We're going to, um, that's the direction that we're going in. And uh, it's all been very exciting. I'm glad to have Molly on board. She's been amazing. Uh, working with her on the Pepperdine University um, demonstration that we did was, uh, was thrilling. Uh, Molly thought, wouldn't it be Two great if like, I'm sorry? Two minutes remain. Oh, what's that? What's the question? Two minutes remain. Oh, two minutes remain? That's what I've got? The, yes. Are we going to answer questions or do I just talk for two more minutes and then what? We'll do, we'll do some questions after. Yeah. Okay. So two minutes of me just talking and then we'll do questions. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So you were talking, you were telling a Pepperdine story. I oh think. yeah. I was talking about you, Molly. So Molly says, uh, you know, wouldn't this be great to beam educators from one country to another country? I said, I don't know, I don't really see it, Molly. I think this is more for entertainment. She says, no, I'm telling you, this, there is something to beaming educators from place to place. You just can't send people anywhere anymore. People aren't getting on airplanes. People aren't even leaving their cities anymore. So Molly sets up this amazing demonstration of us at Pepperdine University um, and room full of educators, professors, PhDs, super smart people. The dean was there, and um, I hope they're okay with me saying this, but uh, it was a real thrill for me to be able to present the technology. Um, in fact, can I, how do I do this? Wait, I think I can, no, I can't. I wanted to show um, my virtual background has a, has a thing of me kind of beaming in. I don't know how to change it on this right now, though. Oh, well. You would go to your camera. And then uh -huh. go, to, go to the where the camera is and click on the little up arrow and then virtual background and there should give you the option with the computer you have uh, to do video. I don't know where it is. Usually there's like another. You don't oh wait, here, here, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Virtual background. And you can upload. Here. This is such a cool thing. I love when David does this. <laughs> okay, so. Okay. So yeah, here, how, is this working out? All right. So that's virtual me. That's real me. Oh. Um, it's almost like an angel and a devil on my shoulders. Which one am I going to believe? But so this is what the, the, um, the hollow portation kind of setup looks like. Uh, there's me standing in a white space. I've got, you know, boom mic. I got some studio lighting, uh, reflective floor, the shadow beams seamlessly into the portal. Some people say, I look better as a hologram than I do as a, as a real person. But, um, and then I say, mom, come on, that's not nice. You shouldn't say that about me. And then, uh, yeah. So this is, what a, this is what it generally looks like. This is live. Um, and so you can stream, you could live stream any number of different ways. You could do it uh, satellite. I see Molly is now on. Are we going to do some questions or what? Yes, David. Um, people want to know why holograms, David. Of course, that I know why holograms, but you tell why. Why are you so into holograms? Oh my goodness! All right, let me get rid of this virtual background. I can't. I can't look at myself three different ways. <laughs> I I can only do one at a time. That's basically my limit. All right. Why holograms? I um. I, holograms or hologram effects are a real passion for me. Um, I wanted to be, um, I wanted to be a broadcaster. I wanted to be able to have my voice broadcast into everybody's cars uh, around the country. You know, growing up listening to the Howard Stern Show and talk radio and sports radio, I just wanted to be on the air. And when I started uh, working at radio stations, it was at that point when things started going digital. Um, so people were starting to do. Uh, people were starting to listen to their radios through the internet and then podcasts started happening. Radio started going away. And so I, I you know, I, and then when I saw the, the Tupac thing, I said, there is something where I can kind of mix my passions for broadcasting to many people from one place and, and cool like, you know, illusions and hologram content. 
and just kind of mixing them together. And so then working at Hologram USA kind of made it easy for me to play around and goof around. And, um, and I was fortunate to be with such a great group of people that we ended up turning it into like a, um, a real industry. It just took off. So that's why it was just, it just, it all kind of sort of happened because, uh, uh, you know, look, had I, had I grown up 20 years earlier, had I been born in the fifties, I, uh, I would have probably, you know, gotten into radio broadcasting and, and would, would have been very happy with that. But, you know. Great. Great. Well, we have an, uh, a question from Anastasia. Hi, Anastasia. I am curious how portal technology works during the pandemic. This is a cool feature for world-renowned speakers to eliminate travel. However, as for the current time, it is not possible to host actual events with attendees. Who are actual users in this time then? Self-isolated families? Okay, well, that's a great question. I touched on it a little bit before, but uh, everybody that you see here is full size. Uh, they're six feet tall inside of this thing. So it's important uh, when somebody needs to be somewhere for one reason or another, whether it's education or um, you know, entertainment, or if it's just connecting, uh, it, it's important that the person that's receiving the broadcast sees that person as if he or she is really there. There's a connection. We're, we're, we're you know, warm-blooded creatures. We're emotional creatures. We, you know, yes, we're used to seeing, you know, 20 boxes on a screen, but there's, there's a disconnect. When you see a person that's really the size they are standing before you, eye level, looking into your eyes, there's, it's different, you know? Um, there's an emotional connection. There is a, uh, there's a physical connection and it, uh, I'm sorry. So that's, so that's why, that's why I think. Okay. Okay. I'm going to call, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. Everyone could hear that. I, um, oh. we have someone who's having trouble logging in. Um, so I'm going to call her right now. Uh, David, I'm going to give you the next question and you can rift on it for a few minutes. Um, um, where do you see holograms going in the future? Where's this all headed, especially with your interest in holograms? And, and you can dive deep into this one. Okay. Another great question. Thank you, Molly. Uh, I wish I could prognosticate about where this is going. I just know from my perspective, I, I think that it's getting smaller. I think that it's getting lesser expensive. Uh, I think that eventually we'll have things like this, uh, whether they're tabletop units or whether we remove the box completely and then it's just somebody materializes in. Um, I think we'll be watching our sports in 360 degrees, I think from uh, on a hologram table. Uh, I think all of this is going into the home. I think, uh, you know, phones eventually uh, will offer a similar solution, you know, maybe something kind of projects out that would be really super cool um it's you know it's really hard to guess uh i think we're at a place right now where you know if you told me three months ago that we were all going to be stuck in our homes and most people were okay with that uh i would have told you that um that you were crazy it's hard to guess what's going to happen um but my guess is if I had gun to my head, what's going to happen with this? Uh, my particular machines will end up um, replacing the cardboard cutout standees in malls with the actual actor in character. Uh, I think that these machines will be in airports and, and museums and malls, uh, you know, hotel lobbies as, as information uh, directories you know, in museums as, as, as virtual docents. I think that's sort of where it's going. I think, you know, you see a lot of movies where it starts to, um, where it starts to showcase this, like futuristic movies, and I think we're getting there. So I kind of, I started out as an entertainment company, but we're, we're slowly becoming a technology company that does entertainment. 